Hello, and welcome to the second edition of Our Quincy High. I'm your host and the proud principal of Quincy High School, Larry Tag Larry. As usual, there are so many good things to talk about in our school community. Uh, just recently, on May 8th, we had our annual wellness fair led by our healthcare technology students and their teachers, Ms. Broughton and Ms. Saylor. There were over 40 exhibits providing information on both mental and physical wellness. I know our students and our staff learned a lot about their choices and how they impact their everyday health. And speaking of our healthcare tech students, I am proud to share that 22 seniors were recently licensed as certified nurses assistants by the state of Massachusetts. Congratulations. Another hot topic uh, around the school, community service is always on uh, the minds of our students and is such a major part of what happens in Quincy Public Schools. And today, the district hosted the 21st annual community service learning celebration at the Terrell Room with students from all of the other different schools sharing their unique experiences and volunteering their time to assist others. It was inspirational to say the least, and we are grateful for all the service our students have done in the community. And what a week it is to be a senior at Quincy High School. Uh, well, just this past Friday, Mayor Koch hosted a breakfast for all of our seniors. And uh, our students are currently going through the sign-out process. Tomorrow is sign-out day, and we will have our prom this Friday. The prom will be held at the Boston Marriott Quincy from 7 to 11 p.m. And thanks to our senior dean and class advisor, Ms. McPartland, and the senior class offices for organizing a terrific night for the class of 2018. The night does not end after the prom. Our parent advisory council, PAC, will be hosting an all-night party at the school right after the prom that will go until 5 in the morning. We cannot thank our parents for their work throughout the school year to make this happen and to all the local businesses who have generously donated to the event. There'll be music, there'll be games, raffles, prizes, and more food than you could imagine. Um, and then next week, the senior celebration continues with our awards night on Tuesday, June 5th, and our scholarship ceremony on the afternoon of Wednesday the 6th. Of course, all this leading up to our graduation ceremony on Monday, June 11th at 6 p.m. at Veterans Memorial Stadium. The class of eight, 2018 has been a joy to have at Quincy High School, and we look forward to them receiving their diplomas and celebrating their accomplishments. We'll miss the leadership of this terrific group of students, but we are fortunate to have some wonderful students ready to step in and lead the school with the class of 2019. Count among them the 39 students who were recently inducted into the national chapter of the National Honor Society. This is one of the more prestigious clubs that Quincy High School has to offer, and I send you to Amber Norton with Miss Good for more details. But we make it look cool. That's all you need to know about NHS. Students are invited to apply after term two of their junior year and they must maintain a GPA of 4.0 or higher. So any junior who has a GPA 4.0 or higher will get invited to apply. Um, and they will have to complete the application process which includes an application, they have to write two essays. Uh, they also need to have a teacher fill out a recommendation form for them as well. And at the same time that they're completing their application, the staff, the faculty and staff at Quincy High School is asked to evaluate each of the, um, each of the applicants and give feedback on them as well. 
Uh, the students are held to four pillars um, to demonstrate that they have the qualities necessary to represent NHS. Um, those pillars are service, character, leadership, and scholarship. And so uh, most members who are invited need to demonstrate that they have acted as a leader or uh, have been elected to a leadership position. That's something that um, tends to go a long way with their application. Um, once students are accepted into NHS, that's done by the Principals Council. They, they're the ones that actually get to decide. I don't have any role in that. Um, we decide as a group what type of service projects we want to work on for the year. Uh, People are only in NHS from the end of their junior year till May of their senior year, so it's really only a year commitment. And so what we've done over the course of the past five or six years is we've decided to do a, a fall service project and a spring service project. And so once we decide which organizations we want to help or nonprofits, then we actually will determine what type of fundraising events we'll have. Um, oftentimes we do pizza sale, bake sale, raffle tickets for sporting events. Uh, we've done waffle sales, hot chocolate sales, um, so you know it's hard to get creative with that because you're competing with so many other groups. Um, so yeah, so this, this past year we raised over $2,000 for hurricane relief in Puerto Rico. That was our fall service project. And this spring, uh, the senior members are going to be coming in and assembling lunch packages for uh, Father Bill's homeless shelter. Uh, we're also running a drive for toiletry items for the shelter as well. So we're hoping to, to you know, start a competition between the grades and see, you know, to collect as many toiletries as we can. Well, we help around plan planning like activities around school, and. I know last chapter they like raised four thousand something dollars for hurricane relief. Well, it helps me like find a way to get back to my community, like outside of the classroom and outside of just doing the thirty hours of community service that's required for graduation. Um, I'm interested in joining NHS because I feel like it's a good opportunity to be able to make um, a difference in the community and in general because it has so many community service opportunities which I'm excited to be a part of. Um, and I like what the senior class has already done and I hope to do something like that next year. Um, well maybe I'd probably see if we could do something about school shootings in general because that's a really big thing right now and our current administration is a little bit problematic. In my supporting victims of gun violence and um, supporting resources and charities that support uh, victims of domestic abuse and shelters for women um, who are in need of those kind of resources. There's a math one, a science one, a business one. Those are the only three I know. I'm pretty sure there's like one for every subject. I'm in science and math. So yeah, I guess I'm just really proud of the kids who actually get invited. We can't thank Ms. Good en uh, enough for all she does in advising this great group of students and all the great initiatives that they do around our school. And much appreciation to Amber Norton. And uh, please note the fine handiwork of Gina Marcello uh, with the camera in that uh, clip. So. Uh, one of the more popular clubs at Quincy High School is our Drama Club, and they recently completed their third performance of the year with their Spring Showcase. But today we take a look at the musical that was performed in April, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I send you to Junior Bobby Stevenson for an update. My name is Margaret Spencer, and I was the artistic director of Hunchback of Notre Dame. I staged the show. My name is Kendall Kelleher. I am a senior, and I was a gypsy and a congregant in the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, Gabby Popa, and I was a gypsy dancer and a featured congregant. My name is Chris Bull, and my role is the musical director. I'm Mr. Doucette, and I was the technical director and designer um, of scenery and lights for Hunchback of Notre Dame. 
Uh, hi, I'm Robert Stevenson. I'm in 11th grade and I play Quasimodo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hi, my name's Amanda Burke. I am a senior here in Quin at Quincy High School and I played Esmeralda. Uh, my name's Tim Pick and my character was Clopin. My name's Noah Culp. I'm a senior and I played Frollo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The fact that it was almost entirely music, um, not unlike an opera, except that there was some dialogue as opposed to recitative between songs, um, but it was uh, the most extensive musical that we've done. What I, th what I found unique about the show is um, that we were one of the first high schools to do it and um, it seemed very, when we first got um, like introduced to it, it seemed very daunting, challenging. Uh, the music was just intense. It was the most music I've ever done in a musical before. I think the unique part about the show was that there really was no downtime musically throughout the whole show. The uh, even if there was uh, dialogue, there was underscore with, uh, in the show. So I think that this, the constant movement musically was what was unique. So I'm a sophomore, and so this is kind of the first show that was like really, really heavy into music, um, like m way more so than other shows. Um, so that was really unique. Also like the setting that it was, uh, yeah. I think it was, uh, the line was what makes a monster and what makes a man, and I think a lot of the characters fringe on that line, um, especially the three guys, uh, Phoebus, Frollo, and Quasimodo. Um, Quasimodo physically being um, seen as a monster and, and his, his caring for people really is what makes him human and, and how much he emotionally you know, connects with Esmeralda and, and other characters, um, even if it is negative or positive. Um, Frollo, his, his connection was he was a man of faith, he was a priest, and, um, and, and you slowly see him kind of, his hatred makes him kind of like a monster. Um, and then Phoebus is somebody who's from the war, he's a soldier, and you see him kind of be war-torn. Um, but he slowly develops into this kind of like loving, caring kind of man. I think watching the students rise to the level of excellence that they did musically. Um, the amount of commitment that they demonstrated and the amount of talent that they tapped into, um, thanks in no small part to Christopher Ball, uh, who was the musical director. Um, a special memory I have from this show is um, there's one scene where all the gypsies are saying goodbye to each other because they have to run away again. Because I'm a senior, um, saying goodbye to everyone felt like pretty real and like hugging all my friends and like being like, oh yeah, last run and all that. So that's very special to me. I don't. I think there's there's too many memories to uh, to kind of pick. It's it's it was a special show, um, and I think. I, I always kind of uh, love to see the seniors' last performance. Um, that's kind of always a special moment, especially to see um, you know to see kids who have been uh, working with us since they were freshmen. Um, all of a sudden now are, are seniors taking on these larger roles um, and kind of becoming student leaders in our club. And so to see them kind of take their final bow is a, a big moment. So I play the villain, um, and he's pretty despicable. Um, and I really like when he dies. Um, <laughs> not just because of the significance of it, but because the whole uh, blocking of the scene and the music that goes on when that happens is just um, fantastic. I, I wouldn't have wished him to die any other way. It's really just the best way for a, a villain to go, I think. And it was just 
so, so fantastic. I think just all the people in the show, it's just like a whole family, and I've met some of my best friends in this drama club. Um, and my favorite memory is probably the first orchestra rehearsal when we get all the, or the orchestra together and all the cast and stuff. Something very um, special to me about this show was that it was my senior show here at Quincy High School. Um, I've been doing shows here with Miss Spencer and Mr. Doucette for years. I've been doing it since I was about nine. Um, and every show has been just so much fun. And um, I've learned so much over the years and made incredible bonds with people. And the fact that this was my last show just made it very like sentimental and emotional for me. Um, and being there on the Sunday show and just standing there stepping up with um, all of the rest of the seniors, it was just very like surreal. Um, I kind of felt chills at that moment. Something that was really truly special to me was um, was the finale. It, it's massive. It's huge. Um, in the end, you know, when we're we we sing this part, you know, the principles, uh, and it's it, we get in a line and then we do our our curtain call, and um, you know we we kind of like hold hands and and um, you know we do our our company bow. And I have a picture of us kind of holding hands in line, and it was a lot of people that just mean so much to me. And, and the picture, whenever I look at it, just kind of rem reminds me how the show is always going to connect us. Thank you, Barbie, and a special thanks to Miss Spencer and Mr. Doucette for putting together this enormous program. You know, there are so many students and other staff involved in a production of this magnitude. Uh, I know that we had our metal fabrication students and carpentry students helping with the set, as well as our art students, our design and visual learning students um, helped develop the marquee. Uh, really, a total interdisciplinary project uh, that always leaves you proud when you leave um, our theater. And now, we come to probably one of my favorite portions of the show, and that's our student spotlight. Um, and it's a pleasure to welcome seniors, uh, Shannon Foley and James Robinson, to our Quincy High School. Shannon, J Shannon and James were recently named as the 2018 Patriot League Scholar Athletes of the Year for Quincy High School. Hello, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Great, Good thank you for coming. Uh, James, I know uh, actually uh, real hot off the presses is um, you had uh, something going on today. You were recognized by another organization this morning. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, receive the MAPC uh, scholarship. I'm very thankful for that and grateful. Great, uh, um, MAPC yes. for, our, for our audience. Um, it's Metro the Metropolitan uh, Area Planning Council. Uh, they sort of plan the local area and for the future. That's great. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Um, now, we're talking about Shannon with our audience, um, what athletic teams have you been in, involved with? Shannon, let's we'll start with you during your time at Quincy High School. Um, so I was a member of the girls' volleyball team and the girls' softball team. Terrific. And I, I am well aware um, that leadership component for you, you were a captain in each of those sports as well. Yes. Terrific. Terrific. James? Uh, I was a member of boys golf team, boys wrestling team, and baseball team. Very busy. And much like Shannon, uh, you, you held leadership positions in some of those sports as well. Yeah, for uh, golf and wrestling. Impressive. Very impressive. Uh, now, really, what is the secret um, to being a true scholar athlete? I mean, to achieve at the level that you have academically. Um, so we talk about you, how well you've done in classes, uh, so well to a level that you are also members of our National Honor Society. Um, you're playing, uh, you know, James, you played the three sports. Shannon, you played the two. You both had captain positions. And I know in addition to these sports that you've played on, you've also been members of our National Honor Society, which we heard about earlier, uh, which also comes with a lot of commitments, too. So uh, it, the grades and your, your achievement in the classroom is really um, something to marvel at. And it only brings to the question, uh, how have you excelled in the classroom and balanced that with excelling on, in the athletics? How do you do it? 
Uh, I'll start with you, James. It comes with a lot of time management, uh, just heading to practice and then coming right home and just nailing out your homework as soon as possible. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but you get used to it. Yeah. Shannon? It's basically what James said. It's about time management and really being disciplined with yourself and having goals for yourself and being able to meet your goals. I mean, it really, when you just take one typical day, it would say during your volleyball season, get up in the morning, Come to school on time, yep. <laughs> right? Go to all your classes, take care of all your business. After after school, going to practice. I know what a coach in IOC practice is like. Yep. Working hard, going home, having something to eat, and then hitting the books. I mean, with the aggressive, uh, ambitious, rigorous schedules that you both have, um, it really is amazing. So it does. It sounds like um, organization is the key, which is probably a good tip for anybody. You know, but I, I do think that there's a drive and that, that goal piece is so important, setting goals for yourself. And you've certainly achieved goals here at Quincy High School. You know, um, during your time, I'm, I'm sure that you've had many people um, who've influenced you over the years, you know, your parents and family members. But with both of you being lifelong Quincy Public School um, students, could you please maybe take a moment and share about a staff member who gave you some special direction or inspiration? James? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'd say my top three uh, came from Quincy High, actually. Um, one of them was in ninth grade, Mr. Bujo. Uh, he was a great science teacher. He sort of inspired me to follow uh, STEM. And that led me to meet Mr. Tully, uh, who's really helped me pursue my engineering. Uh, it's a unique part to Quincy High, the engineering program. And that led me to meet uh, Mr. Long. Each one has inspired me to follow my career and become an engineer, hopefully. Terrific, terrific. Shannon? So my top influential teachers would be mm. Mr. Gendron and Mr. Brecht. They're both math teachers. Mm. I've had them for three years throughout my time here and I really enjoy math so they've helped me push myself and I eventually made it to AP Calculus which I never thought I could have done. That's and impressive. Mr. Gendron was the one who pushed me to take two math classes sophomore year so I could reach that point and then finally when I did reach that point Mr. Brecht was very very helpful. Oh that's great. That's great. Um, I think we, we'd like to think in the, the schools there's always someone there for you. I, we're always talking about kids making connections with somebody in the school, and it's great to hear about the connections that you've made with the staff here at Quincy High School. Shannon, let's talk about plans for next year. So I'll be attending UMass Boston as great. a nursing student. Terrific. And I'm really excited about it. Yeah, well, you do have a lot to be excited about. You had a lot of options mm -hmm. um, graduating from Quincy High School. And James, what about you? I'm going to be attending uh, UMass Amherst. Uh, undecided for engineering uh, it's gonna be a good time so undecided for engineering so yes. we mean like you might want to it's either undecided yeah. or you're gonna dive into I'm, that engineering program I'm diving into uh, engineering program I'm really excited um, I'm interested in the engineering field I'm just not too sure which specific uh, what I'm going to hit. Wait, so you mentioned earlier your time with uh, Mr. Tully, Mr. Long um, and yeah, Mr. Boudreaux, but more into yeah, the engineering yeah. program. Um, so were you in Project Lead the Way? Yeah. Can you just, you know, that, I think that's pretty interesting about an opportunity that you had here um, and that our students at Quincy High School who are interested in engineering. Uh, Project Lead the Way is a great opportunity. Uh, it's almost college level course to see if you really like or understand the concepts uh, that they're going to be presenting for you. It's uh, really good. Uh, it's advanced credit. Um, it helps you determine where you want to go with your future, and I really enjoyed it, and it's setting me up well for my future, not even for engineering, just in general, for uh, science, math, just prepared in general. That's great, and when you say advanced level credit, I think this is real interesting for our audience, and um, so conceivably for some of the coursework that you've done, you could, I mean, we know across the board you're both in AP classes, you're taking AP exams, and you could score uh, proficiently enough to get college credit for those. Uh, within the engineering program, for some of those classes as well, is there an articulation that you can get credit towards? Uh, yeah, so uh, there's a the college RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, that is their program. Um, Project Lead the Way is their program. Uh, sort of criteria um, and if you succeed and pass on their final um, 
then it can count as college credit. That's um, other schools don't accept it as much, but it's definitely up there for uh, introduction classes, and it's really helpful. Nice, nice. Now, uh, you know, we mentioned lifelong Quinley Public School students, but, uh, you know, tell me where you've been and how you got here. Shannon? So I went to elementary school at Marymount and then Broadmeadows Middle School. You sure did. And Quincy High. All right, all right. Um, I went to Atherton Howe, uh, went to Central. Uh, it's a little far, but I did. And then I uh, came here to Quincy High. So um, Shannon looks at me when she says Broad Meadows because I had Shannon, I was lucky enough to be Shannon's principal for two years. And, my, and last show we had Rachel Shannon on and she was the same. Um, I'm not playing favorites. You, you earned your way onto the show. Um, and so I had her for two years plus the three more here. So it's been an absolute pleasure. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on to the show. Um, your stories are uh, exactly what we want for our students. You know, you came to Quincy High School, you took advantage of opportunities, and you have a bunch of options for what you want to do going forward upon graduation. So I'm um, looking forward to the uh, rest of our senior events going on and finishing up with graduation on the 11th. And now I send you out to some great footage of our cultural fair with Nick Natsios, filmed by Andrew Hamilton. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for sitting down with me today and letting me interview you about the uh, cultural fair. Thank you so much for taking the time to ask me about the cultural fair. So what is the cultural fair and uh, when exactly is it? The cultural fair is a school-wide celebration that showcases all of the cultures that our students are part of or interested in. Um, and we celebrate it with food, traditional dress, um, also music, uh, language, and geography. So what is your role in the cultural fair? My role in the cultural fair um, is just the overseer of all of the groups, um, communicating to the advisors, making sure everybody has everything they need, and I'm also the advisor of the Italian table. How can a student get involved with the cultural fair? Students get involved uh, by reaching out to teachers so that they can advise our table, um, getting a group of students together who are interested in the same culture or cultures or countries, um, and having meetings and you know deciding what aspects they want to show. Um, you can also get involved uh, by creating art for the fair, even if you're not going to participate. Um, and just by coming, attending, and you know, mingling with the groups and trying to find out as much you know, interesting facts as you can and make sure you eat the food too. <laughs> How many cultures will be represented in this year's fair? There are about 18 tables, uh, but way more cultures than that because some cultures are sharing the same table together. Thank you for answering those questions for me. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really enjoyed talking about the cultural fair, and I hope you can make it. All right, so I'm at the cultural fair today, and I'm with... Alana, Joanna, Khadija, and they did uh, the Dominican Republic table, and I'm going to be asking them a few questions. So what is your favorite food uh, from the cult from Dominican culture? Definitely the chicken. <laughs> the empanadas. Arroz con leche. Uh, what kind of foods did you bring in today to show off to everyone? Sorry, what was that? What kind of foods did you bring in today to show off to everyone? Um, Pastelitos, rice, chicken. I brought Oreo brownies. We got fruit. We got... We got rice. <laughs> we bought flan. We bought a whole lot of pastelitos because we always sell out of those. We got a lot of stuff. And uh, what is your guys' favorite thing about uh, Dominican culture? The food. The people! I like how open and free they are. All right, guys, thank you for the interview. Thank you. Hey, so I'm here with... AJ McGilvery. And I'm going to be interviewing about uh, his Irish table at the cultural fair today. So what kind of foods did you bring in? We brought in a lot of baked goods. We brought in brown bread, soda bread. We brought in uh, some potatoes. We brought in some scones. And we brought in a drink called My Wadi. So what is your favorite out of those? My favorite would probably have to be the brown bread. The brown bread is very good. Uh, and what is your favorite thing about uh, Irish culture? I, my favorite thing about Irish culture is a really tight-knit um, community. We all kind of come together uh, at different uh, points in the year, like especially the St. Patrick's Day. We all just celebrate uh, being Irish, even if you're not Irish here in Boston. 
All right, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, too. Hi, I'm here with... Olivia. And I'm going to be interviewing about her Italian table at the cultural fair. So what foods did you bring in today to represent Italy? Um, today we brought in some eggplant parmesan, some lasagna, some gnocchi, um, cannolis, some Italian soda, and then like some cookies. What is your favorite food out of those? Uh, my favorite food is eggplant parm. Oh yeah, mine too. Uh, and what is your favorite thing about Italian culture? Um, I would say that my favorite thing about Italian culture is like the sense of family and like security. Thank you, Nick and Andrew. The cultural fit is one of the biggest events of the year at Quincy High School. And a big thank you to Miss Amira, all the teachers, and to all the students who shared with pride their culture with our school community. It is the diversity of our school that makes it such a special place. Another component that is vital to the culture and climate of Quincy High School is student involvement. And students having a voice, not only in our school, but in their community as well. Once again, I send you to Amber Norton for some coverage. March every at every shooting or every unjustified death or every system. Um, so the main point of my speech was to tell kids that they have a voice because we are told so many times that we don't. We are told by adults, by anyone in power, basically that kids don't have a say in anything that happens to them. So this is just uh, something to inspire students to use their voices to go out and advocate for the causes they care about. And it also reminds people that it's not just a one day march. I think the outcome of the walkout was really great because we had such a great turnout. There were so many students there who were so passionate about um, the end of gun violence um, and they were truly speaking out on what they believe in. I just thought it was cool to be able to stand up for something I believe in. Quincy has never done something like this before, and it turned out really good. Everybody was respectful. A lot of kids walked out that day, more than I was expecting, and it made me hopeful more than anything that so many people are willing to go out and advocate for their cause. I think it was really great that students of our age get to stand up for something they believe in and make an impact. I'd like to say to all the kids of Quincy High and any student in general that you are more than what people tell you you are, uh, that you have more power than you think you have. You should go out as much as you can and to look into like different marches, into different causes to sign your name for so people know that there are people like you out there who care about what happens in their schools and who cares about just basic human rights. So just go out, advocate, march, put your name on as many things as you can so you leave a mark on this issue. That ends our show for today. I want to thank you for watching and thanks as always to our great production team for their work in putting together the show. We'll see you next time.